So straight into it with this one, we're going to take a look at the backstage fallout following the you know CM Punk Jack Perry footage airing on AEW Dynamite. Uh, Fightful have details of the decision to air the CCTV footage, saying that they learned that Tony Khan had the idea last week following the interview that Punk did with Ariel Helwani, and then all of the shots that went back and forth in the media from WWE personalities over the past week have accelerated that decision. Uh, but by last week, Creative was set for the video and the decision to promote it right after WrestleMania was planned. Uh, there's been conflicting reports on the backstage reaction to airing the footage, though, with PW Torch sources reporting that the Bucks were not in favor of doing the segment, but Fightful sources saying that uh, they were told this isn't true and they were fine with doing the angle. Yeah, Fightful also continued to say that the general response we heard from AEW talent was that they felt this added to the importance of having a huge show for AEW Dynasty, and they didn't think the f- uh, uh, and they didn't think sorry the full pay per view schedule announcement the following day was an accident AEW put out a nice little post showcasing yeah, all the things that were coming boom, out boom 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 here are all the cities we're going to be hitting here's all the shows yes I guess in sort of response to, to hoping that you know they had a lot of eyes on this product and they here's wanted a, to get buzz here's a big yes. promotional yeah. statement yeah exactly uh, Fightful continued to say that elsewhere in the AEW locker room there were natural wish someone else would have got that TV time reactions uh, several in AEW felt like they are in a no win situation after seeing CM Punk's Ariel Helwani interview with him poking fun. Uh, sorry, Ariel Helwani interview, him poking fun at Osprey, Triple H poking fun at Osprey as well. Mm. Michael calls references to AEW and Pat McAfee taking shots at Tony Khan and AEW. Yeah. Um, a lot to digest, I guess. Um, I think the, the idea they're in a no-win situation, I... I think the only way you win is by just not biting, I guess, and not addressing it. it does it make CM Punk look more bitter from your standpoint, I guess, if you were AEW, does it make AEW, uh, does it make CM Punk look more bitter if he's the one talking about you yeah. and you're the one just cracking on? Or does it does it make it like, because I think reacting to it is exactly what, it's almost like they, they, they had a perfect trap set yeah. up and they've just gone, whoop. Yeah, definitely. It, but it's it's not like even like it was a trap. It was just Tony went, ah, and yeah. it, it hurt itself and it's confusion. And and, and uh, I completely under, do you know what? I completely understand AEW side of wanting to yeah. perhaps, you know, punch punch back. Yeah. Punch back. At, well, you get, they're getting punched down on, right? <clears throat> yeah. And the, yeah, that, that's, that's a given. Yeah, for sure. But I think it's a difficult situation to do almost just because of how hot, WWE has been recently. Yeah. They've literally just come off what, you know, they're touting as the They've biggest WrestleMania the in history. Disavowed Vince entirely. We've yep. had Stephanie come out and say <laughs> this is the Paul Levesque era. Like, yes. he, they're, they're really trying to make something of it. Yeah, I get that. for sure. And I guess, you know, I, I guess the hope from Tony Khan's side of things was to, to embarrass CM Punk um, and, you know, ha- have some sort of legitimacy in hitting back in a, in a mm. big way as well. And I unfortunately feel like it sort of backfired for them a little bit here. I think so. I, I think the the idea that, you know, people wishing somebody else could have had the time is very valid. Yes. Uh, I, yeah. I think that, you know, on a, on a wrestling show with somebody who's not working for the company, I don't really know what, like, how does this end? What At what point is this, where does it go? Like Jack Perry, is he? Is this going to be spun into a return angle for him? Is yeah. like, what, like, how are we going to get there? How are we going to move on from this? Because it, it's, it's like, this is this big sort of landmark point. Yeah. We need to move on, but it feels like every mm-hmm. single route you could take is just sort of a non-starter. I get, yeah. It, again, I, I feel like it's quite difficult because I feel like obviously everything that's happened, this is why Jack Perry has left the company. Yeah. He's gone to New Japan and, and everything. He's been doing some good stuff there, like tearing yeah. his contract and making quite a, a quite a buzz for yeah, himself. Um, yeah. Even online, I've been seeing that like his scapegoat t-shirts and everything <laughs> have been selling out as well. Um so I do think it's it's difficult almost not to reference something like mm. this. Obviously, this is the reason, uh, or at least the catalyst is why he's gone to New Japan, done the skips, goat stuff. So yeah. I feel like him is he's very least... intrinsically connected with the CM Punk yeah. thing in terms of like, this is why this character has happened essentially. Mm. So it does feel like you are going to have to reference that in some manner. And I do feel like, you know, the books will probably bring that up at, uh, and, yeah. and turn it into more of a thing. Um, whether they needed this specifically to 
feed into the angle that they're having with FTR at Dynasty remains to be seen because it felt like the, the yeah. crowd almost didn't really care. It well, felt the like the were talent were, punk and, at least FTR were trying to make the best out of, a, of the situation that were yeah. given as well. And they really did try to too. Um, it just felt like this necessarily didn't have to be aired in order to further mm. the angle. Um, and it did make Jack <laughs> Perry look like a little bit of a of a wimp, yeah, in my opinion, and, and the, unfortunately. Well, it, it, and that's the and, and he's not exactly there to kind of defend himself in the situation, yeah, I guess. He's, yeah. he's, he's you yeah. know, so like I uh somebody on stream last night said that they could see something working that they could see working would be uh Jack Perry coming back and insisting that he beat up Punk in yes. that footage and that he was the one who came out on top and just being delusional but mm. it doesn't really feed into the work he's doing and it would be a shame to abandon that kind of work that he's doing as well. Yeah, but, for sure. Uh, in terms of like, you know, the wider scope on this, looking over <laughs> to the WWE side, Fightful had spoken to people on WWE side. Uh, they were saying that there were plenty of people talking about this within WWE uh, but those that they had spoken to were just knackered after WrestleMania basically. It's been a hell of a week for them. They heard no particularly surprised reaction or anything that happened that people didn't expect. Uh, Punk is not getting punished, scolded, or anything of the like within the company. There were apparently a few wrestlers who considered the video a cell phone, which I think quite a lot of people see it that way, mm. uh, and others that said they simply didn't care and were watching out of curiosity. I guess a bit like going past a, 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 an incident on the motorway. You know, yeah. everybody's sort of like rubbernecking a bit. Um, which I can see that as well, but uh, Fightful went on to say, you know, the prevailing hope backstage was that this benefits Jack Perry in mm. some way, both in his reaction from the crowd wrestling in Chicago and hopefully bringing him back to AEW to capitalize on it. Uh, but I mean, online, the reaction's I mean, just been brutal. Yeah, right? that remains to be seen, especially, yeah. you know, with them going to, uh, you know, going to Chicago as well, he's going to be... That's going to be a nuclear behold, audience. at least anyway. Yeah. But again, like, I really do genuinely hope he can come out of this stronger in some yeah. in some sense and and lean into it in a way that that really does benefit him and his character because I am enjoying the scapegoat stuff like yeah. you said as well I think there's something of substance there for him and I hope he does get to carry it on and uh, it's and it's be important with it's it. important that he's able to do this as well because it, you know everybody loves jungle boy but yeah. it would be a shame for somebody who has all of this creative you mm -hmm. know within them to to, mm -hmm. own, to be stifled into just being that one character for a while so it's quite nice seeing uh, this this evolution of Jack Perry and I want it to continue. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, online as well, there's mm. been thousands of tweets obviously just sharing the CCTV, CCTV footage Sorry, mm. um, of obviously what, what went down at All In. However, a lot of it has been copyright struck on Twitter, uh, yeah. including fan footage from inside the arena. Now, Gorilla Position shared a tweet saying AEW had actually requested their tweet with footage from the incident be removed. I believe um, it's the gorilla position tweet where they, they, they make an argument that I agree with, which is essentially, well, if you want it removed, why did you put it on internationally syndicated TV? Yeah, and, and <laughs> we, we were literally talking about this just before we started recording. Yeah. It's kind of like, I understand it from a sort of perspective that perhaps AEW are hoping that people go and watch the actual yeah. show itself. Um, however, with the sort of sentiment online about how this maybe has backfired um, against them, then mm. it almost looks like you know they they sort of trying to, to oh, cover the tracks. Let's, let's uh, actually take somebody. That down somebody and... did bring up the idea that there's uh, maybe GDPR involved, and mm. that, that, that this maybe um, the footage is maybe has maybe been cleared to air in one sense, yes, but is not able or really shouldn't be aired in other senses. So it may be that there's sort of a, a data privacy type thing going mm, on here okay. with the rights to the footage, but ultimately it still just looks like, and I guess all people are gonna kind of say the headline coming away from this for forever now, moving on will be, they try to cover it up. Yeah. So I, I will probably hear, you know, why things are yep. coming down, but yep. ultimately it's, uh, it's just going to go in that direction, isn't mm -hmm. it, for now? Uh, it's still shocking. I don't know why they're pulling it, but it'd be nice to get an answer. Yeah. Uh, but moving over to uh, Will Ospreay's promo on AEW Dynamite, which got people talking as well, uh, to bring everybody up to speed on the Pat McAfee show, Triple H said about young talent, when I see people trying to make it and they pick the job where they go, well, I work less and the schedule's lighter, okay, I'm glad I didn't get you. Because if you're not in the grind, sorry, if you're not in it for the grind at that point in your career, you have no business 
being here. And then on Dynamite, Osprey responded with, He said, Normally I wouldn't rise to this type of bit, right? But seeing how the guy who said it is only in the position because he was grinding on the boss's daughter, Oof. you have no business telling me what the grind is all about, my friend, because you have no idea what I fight for. Uh, it does feel odd. WWE <coughs> wanted Will Ospreay. It, it's sort of, I, I get the, mm -hmm. I understand Triple H's, where Triple H's sentiments coming from, I guess, from like a sporting background mentality mm -hmm. of like, you should want to be, you know, playing as much as possible if you're on like a team and you're, you're an athlete and you should be doing. But at the same time, I get, you know, like the entire culture of work's changed since the exactly. 90s, right? So like it, a lot of people like Will Ospreay, I wouldn't really class as, as you know, young new star. Will mm -hmm. Ospreay's been over in Japan. He's, he's been, been grinding. He's been yeah, grinded. So I think, I think it's one of those where it's, it was odd to take that shot at Will for me because Will's just been, I guess maybe because I'm a British wrestling fan, Will's just been a fixture for so long yeah. um, that it, it feels sort of like odd that he'd be the guy who gets singled out. But mm. ultimately, it, yeah, I mean, it's not unexpected that there was some sort of clap back with, we had the edge situation. We had, yeah. uh, obviously everything going on with the footage mm -hmm. right now. Of course, Osprey did have talks with WWE, as we were just saying, uh, but he established a fight for that uproot in his family and, and leaving the UK wasn't something he wanted to do. He wanted mm -hmm. to be able to keep that while working full-time for AEW. Uh, there were rumors that emerged Thursday that he was fed the line. However, Fightful were told by sources close to Osprey and the situation that it was actually Osprey's idea. They were told that he was fine with cutting the promo and there were no issues in that regard. And he actually came in to work with Creative on the promo as well. Oh. Um, shots were taken at him in the media last weekend puzzled wrestlers across multiple companies with one talent saying that it was quite obvious that he was attempting to be respectful mm -hmm. of WWE and the process after opting to go with AEW for the sake of his family uh, but they were told ran he ran the promo by several people backstage and that at one point a shot at Punk was considered after Punk's tattoo line last week but considering the nature of Dynamite many felt it was a bit of overkill and they decided against it so which I, I think was probably the, the, <laughs> the best thing as well I think it, it's one of those where I, I I, I, I guess it's been so long since I've seen wrestling companies take open shots at each other yeah. that it just feels odd. Like for me, it feels like one of those like, ah, oh, I just wouldn't like, mm. but then how do you, how do you respond when, you know, one of the most powerful people in the industry, if not the most powerful person in the industry in the, the US, like is sort of just taking shots at you. You can't, you've yeah. got, you, like, it's gotta be hard not to bite. Yeah. Especially when you've, you've almost went to work for that person. For, for, for sure, for sure. I, I just feel really bad for Renee, yeah. Renee Paquette in oh, that God. situation yeah, because that she was, felt very, she's, yeah. you know, openly said that she respects uh, Stephanie McMahon mm. so much. Uh, and maybe that line, she didn't know that line was coming. It certainly felt like it with a response to that situation yeah. anyway. Maybe it would have been nice to run that by her yeah. uh, beforehand, before doing doing that but uh but yes uh here we are well that's it for your first dose uh, of news for the day we'll be back later on with any with with some more when more news breaks but we'll catch you in a bit tie bye